life for free. But you can give them to the birds and bees. I want the money. Notwithstanding uh, Shakespeare or the Koran, people do often borrow money. As an equation, current price minus the previous price plus income and dividends in the case of uh, common shares divided by the previous price. In words, the uh, sales minus the purchase, uh, notice that doesn't matter whether we're going long or short, plus the dividend income minus the interest expense divided by the cash put into the investment. Let's do an example. 1,000 shares purchased at 50 bucks, dividend $2 a share. Scenario 1, sold at 53 bucks, a gain of 3 plus $2 dividend, well let's see, uh, that's 3 on 50 is 6 percent, 2 on 50 is 4 percent, yep that does add to 10 percent. And all cash, uh, the gain of 3 uh, plus 2 divided by 50 is 10 percent. On margin, borrowing 10 grand, putting in 40 grand to get the total of 50, we now have to adjust a minus interest charge of 500 and Divide by the dollar amount we put in, which was 40 grand, and now we get 11 and a quarter percent, illustrating why they call it margin or leverage. And the leverage properties can be illustrated in our second case, where we have a loss of three points on 50, making it now a sales price of 47. And sure enough, a loss of three on 50 points is minus 6%, but we did get the dividends of two on 50. That's plus four, so net minus two. And you do it in a cash version, and sure enough, the cash version agrees. But now let's do this on margin. Again, borrowing 10, putting only in 40. Uh, again, a loss of three, but a gain of two, and a minus $500 in interest. And now we again divide by the dollars put in, 40,000, giving us a loss of three and three quarters versus the minus two. Showing again why margin is called leverage, making good things better, but bad things worse. This discussion on borrowing leads me to a topic that I have not seen done well in many a textbook, and that is how do we handle interest expense in cash flows? Well, net present value is a cash flow in the future discounted back to the present minus the initial outlay. And uh, we can take the borrower or lender's perspective. It's just a mirror image of the debit credit entry. And uh, let's say uh, in this first example, we uh, borrow 100 and we're paying back 10% in a year. And the lender lends 100 and receives 10% interest plus the principal in a year. And if we were to discount this at 10%, well, that 110 proceeds at 1 plus K for one period is 100, minus 100, the net present value is zero, as it should be. By the way, this means that you it could uh, omit this in a cash flow analysis if you're discounting it at 10%, or include it in the cash flow, but notice properly including the initial principal and the principal repayment, as well as the interest expense. Let's do this after tax. Let's say a 30% tax bracket. Well, that would be 7%, $7 interest to both the borrower and the lender. We discount this at 7%. 107 is the cash flow principal plus the interest. Discounted at 7%, that's 100, minus the 100 initial outlay. The net present value is zero. Finally, I like to point out that a after-tax cash flow on any initial issuance of a bond has the same present value. And here's a proof here, which I'm not going to belabor with walking you through. But you can read it if you want to while I close up and say some other things of relevance. And that is that uh, this can be shown for other types of bonds and cash flows of various kinds of borrowing, including uh, revolving credit, uh, zero coupon bonds, original issue discount bonds, and that's if you properly, as the tax law does, require that you recognize at the time of the accrual as a tax payment. And what that means is that for the practitioner and student, 
that if discounting net present values, one can properly omit the interest payment and principal if using a discount rate based upon that cost of borrowing, and that any after-tax valuation of any after-tax cash flows has a net present value of zero. And that means that uh, one can, to summarize, note that borrowing increases the returns higher and lower, why they call it leverage, and that cash flows and interest payments can be dealt with in a simpler manner. Normally, you can omit them. Thank <laughs> you.